All Oklahomans, leaders and citizens alike, seem to be asking the same question this week. What does the Supreme Court's decision involving tribal land and jurisdiction actually mean? What changes and what stays the same? Right now, there are more questions than answers. ONR's Jason Doyle has our report. We had a big win this week at the Muskogee Creek Nation, and so that's why I am wearing my Muskogee Proud shirt. The U.S. Supreme Court's McGirt decision celebrated by Oklahoma's five tribes, calling it a victory for sovereignty. The Supreme Court of the United States upheld the Treaty of 1866 with the Creek Nation, saying that the reservation had never been de-established by Congress. They did leave it out for Congress to come back and change that, but in the meantime, I just came from the res. The court's ruling was narrow and focuses on changing the way serious crimes are prosecuted within the five tribes reservation lands. What the court decided was that as a result of those uh, boundaries reflecting an Indian reservation today, the state lacks jurisdiction to uh, uh, prosecute crimes by or against tribal members in that area. The ruling took effect immediately and is already having a significant impact in Tulsa, which sits in the Creek Reservation. The Tulsa County District Attorney was obligated to drop charges against a murder suspect to allow the U.S. Attorney's Office to take over. Also, charges were dismissed against a Tulsa County father who left his children in a hot car because the children were Native Americans. He's facing federal charges now. Even before the Supreme Court's decision came down, the tribes in the state were already working together. There are a number of things that the state and the tribes can do together to um, uh, clarify any questions raised by the Supreme Court's decisions, uh, both in the short term in agreements between the state and the tribes alone and in the long term in proposing legislation to Congress. Uh, that will uh, further clarify the, the jurisdictional issues that arise on a reservation. Two criminal cases are directly affected by the decision. Jim C. McGirt and Patrick Murphy will now have to go through the process of having their cases heard in federal court. The technical way that it would work is that there would be a, a grand jury indictment or an information filed and then FBI agents would work up an investigation and the U.S. attorneys would prosecute under federal law. Murphy was facing the death penalty in Oklahoma, but won't end the federal system because the Muskogee Creek Nation did not sign on to the Federal Major Crimes Act. Other tribal members who want to challenge their convictions in state court will have to follow a process. But the others um, that may challenge their conviction would have to go through the, the normal route of appealing to the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals. For some cases, the federal punishment is tougher than what was delivered by the state. A lot of uh, state crimes and, and state penalties are, are much less harsh than what federal law would apply. If they challenged in, in one, they, they may get charged and, and convicted in federal court and may face more time. Also, land ownership doesn't change because of the McGirt decision. I think there were also a lot of fears and concerns that this was not now all of eastern Oklahoma was land that's now uh, owned by the Indian tribes and they and people can be, you know, evicted from their houses or their businesses shut down. And that's also not true. On Thursday, Attorney General Mike Hunter and the five tribes announced an agreement for a jurisdictional framework. It'll be up to Congress to pass it. Well, what our hope is, is that there'll be agreement in Oklahoma between the tribes and the state government. Then we, we will take that agreement and uh, pass whatever legislation that needs to be done. We're not going to try and dictate things from Washington, D.C. That'd be an enormous mistake. Congressman Tom Cole is a member of the Chickasaw Nation and recognizes how important this is to the tribes. So this is going to be tricky, but it's important to the long term uh, health and the relationship between tribal governments, which are a big part of our history and big employers, uh, big uh, uh, players in our state and the state government. So. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable that uh, the two parties have come together. Senator James Lankford agrees he'll likely be involved with guiding the legislation through the U.S. Senate and said after the decision was rendered, the work will continue in the days ahead to clarify a framework for criminal and civil regulatory jurisdiction that provides consistency and predictability for all people living and doing business within the state. However, I am grateful for the commitment from the state and the five tribes to work with the delegation to craft legislation that ensures that the ruling has a minimal impact on individuals and businesses throughout Oklahoma. For now, past and present Muskogee Creek leaders took to Facebook to reflect on the decision and what might happen next.
Um, I join with them in sharing my uh, thanks to the Supreme Court for their action today. Uh, this pending decision has been hanging over the nation for uh, several years now, so we're very pleased to see the decision today. We look forward to our continued partnerships with the state of Oklahoma and local and federal law enforcement agencies to maintain public safety. Jason Doyle, The Oklahoma News Report. Native American activists in Oklahoma are also demanding the story of their ancestors be told alongside the Sooners made famous in the 1889 land rush. Hundreds of protesters brought that message to Oklahoma City's Land Run Monument on Saturday. Leaders of the protest say the heritage of Native Americans is just as important as the history of the settlers. And the reason that we here are here today is because History has not been told in this area right here where they have the Land Run Memorial. It glorifies the pioneers, doesn't talk about the indigenous people that already lived here before other tribes were forcibly made to move here. And so that's all we're here about is education and awareness. The protest did draw some counter protesters who said they were there to protect the Land Run Monument from being defaced or damaged. It was not.